In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Now, I welcome you to my home to hear their amazing stories. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. In this episode, we'll meet a young woman from Florida who once worked as a professional singer and actress. While she was raised in a strong Catholic home, she drifted from her faith in college when she stopped making Mass a priority. But while flipping through TV channels one night, our guest happened upon a Catholics Come Home interview on EWTN. That encounter served as a wake-up call, calling our guest home to her Catholic faith. Like everybody else in this series, today's guest came home to the church by responding to a call of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet Sarah Landman. Sarah, welcome to our home and welcome to the Catholics Come Home Show. Thank you, Tom. We're glad to have you here and our audience loves hearing about our guest's childhood, how you were raised, where you grew up, your family background, what faith you practice. So let's start there. I grew up in Winona, Minnesota. It's a oh, little river town. I know that town. You do? Good. We did Catholics Come Home in Winona, Minnesota. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh, it's right on the border of Minnesota, Wisconsin. Yes. I grew up Catholic, oldest of five children, very active in our parish. My dad was a lector. My mom did children's liturgy. I was a cantor uh, when I got old enough, led, wow. led music, did a lot of that. Really good, strong relationships all throughout the parish, very tight-knit. We always knew our parish priest, came over to our house for meals. Nice. It was just a really nice Catholic upbringing and, and a happy childhood. I went to Catholic school all the way through, um, great religion teachers, great religion classes. It was beautiful, really top-notch and, and very happy. Did your parents have that same background where their parents were devout Catholic and they just handed down that tradition? They were, yes. Uh, both my grandparents were um, and still are devout Catholic. Two of them have yeah. passed away, but uh, great role models, especially uh, I have a 100% Irish grandmother mm -hmm. who is my spiritual role model. Beautiful. She is one of those true prayer warriors yes. that really carved that time out of the day and if she said she was going to pray for you or, you know, the lady at the grocery store or <laughs> anybody, right. she, she did, did it. Yeah. yeah. And just kept kept doing that. So you had a beautiful childhood, a great upbringing, and then you went to college. Uh, what happened in your college days? <laughs> I did. And I went to a Catholic college uh -huh. and I just kind of slowly drifted away. Mm. It, 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 there, there was nothing big dramatic that happened. Yeah. I just started kind of going to mass there. Campus ministry ran it. I just didn't feel the same kind of connection. Yeah, you didn't I have felt. a community, huh? I, yeah, I, didn't, I yeah. didn't feel like I was part of that community. I was a theater major, so the theater majors weren't necessarily the kids running the campus ministry, <laughs> yeah. um, for better or worse, and not everybody was the same, but I just didn't feel home. And yeah. so, you know, not going a week turned into not going for two weeks. You got out of the habit. Out of the habit, and, you know, just kind of slow, I was slowly drifted out and, but still remain culturally Catholic. I would right. describe myself as Catholic. I still believed in God, had a devotion to Mary. I just wasn't, I wasn't practicing. I wasn't putting in the time. How was your prayer life as you stopped going to Mass? Did that suffer as well? It suffered. I think I got into the habit of only praying when I needed something. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that regular devotion, but it wasn't completely gone. I never completely was gone. I just wasn't active and not really living the way I, I could have been. I, I regret it because I was at this Catholic college that had so many opportunities and I just, I said no to them. 
you know, the way you describe praying when you needed something. A guest on our first season uh, it called it like the vending machine, God, where you, <laughs> you put in a prayer and you want something out, you know, yes. and that's the prayer life of many people who don't really realize it's, it's a relationship with Jesus and that God is a loving Father. Were there a number of students on campus who were devout or was the campus pretty much like you where some bothered and some didn't? There was a group that was. I just wasn't part of that group, unfortunately. So I've got a tough question, but I thought I'd ask, being a theater major, did that make it more difficult? Because sometimes in theater, people are not as devout? I mean, a, a little bit. There were some kids that were, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they weren't the kids going to, to mass every, yeah. every Sunday. And I don't want to blame anything well, on I anybody understand. else, but it was just kind of, right. you know, it, it was a small Catholic college and you, people are kind of put in buckets. And right. that right. bucket didn't really mix with uh, this bucket over here. And that's okay. And, and did your life, let me interject this question, did your life take some weird twists and turns or did you have more challenges because you weren't leading that faith life that you knew so well as a child? I think in college I could have, I could have prevented a couple heartbreaks yeah. and a couple dark, tough periods yeah. in life. And you didn't realize that they were there because you didn't have God walking with you and leading you. You were trying to do it on your own. I was, yeah. yeah. And it just, uh, in hindsight, I wish I, w I would have. And I, there were opportunities to have it, and I just I said no, I wasn't listening. And around that time, um, it was about 2001, the priest scandal happened too. So the first that one. the first one, you know, I, I started questioning my faith. Yeah. A lot of people around me started questioning my faith, right. so that it didn't make anything any better. It was just an easy excuse to not be plugged in. In just a minute, you'll learn what helped draw Sarah home to her Catholic faith. It was odd for me yeah. to watch EWTN right. and it hooked me right away because you were being interviewed oh. and you were telling your story and I felt like you were talking right to me. Years ago when I started acting, modeling and singing in Mexico, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. It took me many years to discover that success, fame, money and all the pleasures of the world were not going to fulfill me. I got to a point in my life where I thought I had everything, but I realized something was missing. Thankfully, I began a faith journey that brought me back to God and home to the Catholic Church. You can too. Discover more at catholicscomehome.com. So Sarah, at this point, you're in college, a Catholic college, but your faith is kind of waning. You're just not taking it as seriously, not putting the time and effort into it, and starting to get out of the habit of going to weekly Mass and making God a priority. What was the catalyst in your life? What happened where you suddenly took another look at faith and started to grow in faith? So college ended. Um, I got married. I got married to another Catholic. We got married in the church, but Good we were you. kind of... In the same page, you know, yeah. we were Catholic, but not not going every Sunday. But your parents appreciated it. Yeah, and, and yeah. you know, we, we knew that's where we eventually wanted to end up, but we still got married and, you know, we weren't going every Sunday. It's, yeah. it's amazing how easy it is to get out of that habit and how hard it is to get back and be really true to it. Yes. So uh, we were married early in our marriage. Um, I just, even from when I started to drift away in college, I felt an emptiness. Mm. I, I felt an emptiness that just got worse and worse and worse and just a sadness. And you couldn't put your finger on what it was. I, I couldn't. Who was know? missing? You just knew something was different. Definitely. Yeah. And I felt it. I started waking up in the middle of the night, not mm. being able to sleep. Um, and one night, uh, it was a cold February in Minnesota. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I couldn't get to sleep. I actually got out of bed, went downstairs, and turned on the TV, and EWTN was on. And we never watched EWTN. We were not EWTN Shame on regular you. <laughs> viewers. That was not who we were. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, not yet. We are now. But yeah. it, it was odd for me yeah. to watch EWTN, right. and it hooked me right away because you were being interviewed. Oh. And you were telling your story, and I felt like you were talking right to me. Oh, praise God. And your commercials, you showed some commercials. Like the Epic of Ange commercial or yeah, as a sample. Yeah. yeah, it was, I just, my heart, just something happened. And it was, I just had never really been invited back before oh, like wow. that. Nobody it was, really asked nobody you. really asked me back. Boy, doesn't that convict us? We need to ask <laughs> people to come home. 
in just the way you did it, and one of the there was a preview of one of your commercials. That I think the story of your life. Yeah, movie that the, yeah that mm -hmm. struck me just right in my core. And yeah, where people are reviewing the movie of their life, the good and the bad they've done, and it, it kind of has a divine mercy part in the middle where it says, no matter what we've done, where we've been, you know, with God, we can have a perfect happy ending to our story. And I imagine as a theater major, you saw the art in it, you saw the story in it, and that had to personally touch you in some way too. It definitely did. And just the message of, it's okay you've been away. Yeah. Come back. We yeah. still want you. You're still valuable to us. We want you to come Praise back. God. Praise God. It was so crucial to my entire life. I'm just so grateful. And from that moment on, I vowed not to miss Mass ever again. Praise God. <laughs> I that started instant. going back. Yes. I mean, I, I, I had been feeling bad about it yeah. and had that whole... But it was the catalyst, right? It was it convicted the, you that I got to do something. It was like the, you know, I'm listening, right? Well, praise God that the Holy Spirit queued up that interview, probably maybe Father Mitch on his live show or a different Father Benedict Rose show, one of the shows I was on, talking about our apostolate of Catholics from home. And I thank God that he queued it up and he was able to use it that way. You know, it's amazing because when you start evangelizing, and that's the thing, people are afraid to evangelize or sharing the faith. You become addicted to it because you see lives change. Yep. So by you sharing that with me makes you want to do all the more to help more people. And you know how the domino effect works then. So you see the show, you make the commitment to go to Mass. What happens next? My husband was reluctant to go with me. I kind of drug him along with me. Uh, but long story short, now he is a devout Catholic. Praise His God. faith is as strong as mine. Now when he didn't want to go, did he want to sleep in? Or was it more like, I just don't need that formal religion stuff. It was the formal religion mm -hmm. and I think he at one point was almost in that like I'm not religious I'm spiritual. Oh kind of a millennial spot. Speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he got to the spot where he is now very devout. We started going together um, and we started bringing other people back Praise and inviting God. other people back and family members and friends and just it made our marriage stronger to both be on the same page with what is the most important. Beautiful. Now your life took you to an interesting career path. So you were a theater major. You yes. ended up where? Yeah, I moved from Winona, Minnesota to New York City. Wow. Uh, <laughs> culture shock. It was culture shock. Um, and you were a practicing Catholic I at this was point. a practicing Catholic yeah. uh, with a strong marriage, but we lived apart for a bit, um, went back and forth. Uh, commuting, yeah. Yeah, but I, I really had it on my heart that I wanted to go and live in New York and try to be an actor um, and a producer. I had some success. And you were a singer. I was a singer. Or you still too. are a singer, but that <laughs> I was still, your, Yeah, I still yeah. am, but I, I did that for five years, and I met so many interesting people and I had some interesting opportunities to evangelize Interesting then. is a good word to use about Broadway and off-Broadway. It, it, it <laughs> is, but you know what? Everywhere people are hungry. Yeah. Those people are just as hungry as anybody else. I think Raymond Arroyo's career path back in the day was something related to Broadway as well. And did you actually perform in plays off-Broadway? I did, yeah. I performed in plays off-Broadway. Uh, I did some improv, some singing. I, I, I got to a certain point but I think God didn't want me to get to that next point. Yeah. I think I was there for a certain reason, and it was to meet people, to touch some hearts, to have that experience, to have that be part of my story. It wasn't for me to be it famous. Wasn't story. It wasn't. So I've got to ask you this story. point. I had a magician on the show, and he did a magic trick at this yeah. point. I had a comedian on, and he told a couple of jokes. I have to ask you, can you sing a little bit for us? Yeah, sure. I'll sing a little Ave Maria. How's Let's that? do it. Ave Maria. You've been given a gift. That was Thank you. great. Thank you. Wow, I have no singing voice, as my family would attest to. Uh, I get that lack of talent from my mother. We used to fight over who didn't have to sit next to her during <laughs> Mass because she would change keys a lot. So I have that heritage. So I'm really impressed with your talent. Praise God. Thank you. Where did your life take you next after your stint in New York trying to make it on Broadway? And then how did that change your family life and how did your faith grow at that point? So I was there about five years. I had a decent amount of success, but I kind of got to a certain point, right? And I had a decision to make. Mm -hmm. And that was do this for another five years or go home. Yeah. And my husband was at home. We were living apart. And I was home in Winona for a break. And I went to St. Stanislaus Church. <laughs> I love that name. Polish church? <laughs> Very Polish church, I'm actually. mostly Polish, so I love that. It's a basilica. You'll ah, have to come visit sometime. Yeah, I'd love to. Provided some nice, you know, 
some nice babcha and give me some pierogi and guomki <laughs> and all the good stuff. <laughs> we will make sure that all happens. Great. Um, but I was cantering at mass and a man came up to me that I didn't know and he said, something on my heart told me for you to look at St. Faustina. Wow. Look her up and, and just study her a little bit. Yes. And I did, and that was when I was kind of at this decision point to keep going in New York, because I loved New York. Mm. I had a lot of fun in New York. Um, or come home mm. and be with my husband, start a family, you know, yeah. have a little bit more of a traditional life. Sure. And I read her, and she touched my heart. I read her writings, I studied you know, about her, and for some reason, she, she called me out of New York. Beautiful. And to go live in Naples, Florida, and eventually to motherhood. And I'm so grateful she did. What do you know about her and the divine mercy in particular that has really blessed you on that journey? Just that God's mercy outweighs God's judgment. Yeah. And that just that beautiful gift that he gave us and through her message, just that there's nothing that, there's nothing that I could have ever done or will ever do that can really separate me or anybody I knew or know from that mercy. And it was just so beautiful to me yeah. and just kind of, more, it just helped me make the right decisions. Isn't it poetic too, of all the different evangelicals we could have shown on that interview on EWTN, you saw the movie commercial, which has the Divine Mercy core at the center of it as a theme. And then years later, Faustina shows up in your life. And again, Divine Mercy guides your path and changes it. Uh, it's beautiful how God works. So at this point, you and your husband are living in Naples, Florida. What are you doing as your career and what's happening in your faith life and family life? Sure, so um, I'm a philanthropy executive. I've raised about half a billion dollars wow. for nonprofits, a lot of them Catholic causes. Nice. Um, today I work for a company called Insightful Philanthropy. Nice. And we provide donor insights to help deepen donor relationships. Nice. So we take technology and relationship-based fundraising and really help nonprofits engage their donors in a special and unique way. And That's it's cool. been really nice during the time of, you know, only being able to meet people via screens, at least right now, to, for, donor, for nonprofits to be able to continue to engage their donors. So what's cool is God used your ability to communicate with people through theater, you like people and interacting with people, and gave you a vocation where you're not only doing something good, you're helping to build the church by fundraising for nonprofit Catholic causes. That's really cool how he led you on that path. What happened in your family life? Any children yet? I have a four-year-old, uh, Philip Augustine, oh. named after my late grandfather, uh -huh. and a two-year-old, Lourdes Jane. Nice, beautiful, beautiful names. And uh, how have you and your husband grown in faith in the last number of years? I think just praying together, going mm -hmm. to Mass together consistently, being on the same page about what's true has helped. We say the rosary together. Uh, during COVID-19, we, we started streaming daily mass Beautiful. every day. And we both learned so much about, especially the Acts of the Apostles, that we never knew before. Yeah. And that's been really helpful to both of us. Are your children around when you're praying the rosary and watching mass? And do they find it, uh, are they engaged? They are, yes, they love Good. it. Uh, we also pray the chaplet with them. Beautiful. They like to sing the chaplet. Yeah. My uh, four-year-old says the Hail Mary. He'll ask for the rosary. Sometimes we use an app and you know sure. play it and then everybody can follow along. I'm thrilled that you and your family are growing in your faith in Naples, Florida, and that uh, your children are taking an active role in mass attendance and saying the rosary and the chaplet. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Next, you will hear about Sarah's life and family today. I know right now and I, that God loves me no matter what and will never ever leave me and that nothing can separate me from his love. I'm in a good place in my life. And I'm energized by new adventures. I've got friends to laugh with. And a good relationship. But even though I'm kind of comfortable, I sometimes wonder, is there something more? Could God in church be what you're looking for? Come and see at catholicscomehome.com. So Sarah, we, we praise God that you and your husband are strong in your faith, that your children are active in your faith community and uh, working in development, helping Catholic causes. I want to get more personal now. Let's, let's talk, let's reflect back on your faith journey. One question is, 
what feeds your faith? How do you grow in faith? And what saints, what devotions, what do you do that really stokes that fire of faith in you? Sure, I think silence really mm. helps just giving, making, and it's hard with a four and 10 two year old and an executive career and <laughs> <laughs> everything else that's my job, but just really taking that time for silence to, to, hear, to hear the Lord speak. Like reading the Bible, the Adoration Chapel, all of the above? I, I just, pure silence. Mm -hmm. I sit in my backyard and I just listen. Be still and know that I am God. Huh? Yes, that, yeah. that's helpful. Uh, saying the rosary every day is helpful. And just um, as far as devotions, it's really strong devotion to Mary. Yeah. She's never left me. Even no. when I started to drift away, I yeah. still felt her Beautiful. very close in my life. And do you have a favorite saint, other obviously the Blessed Mother, but do you have a favorite saint? Oh, Pope John Paul, the Saint Pope John Paul II. I love it. Another Polish guy, we love him. <laughs> yeah, I just think he was right about a lot. And oh, the yeah. new evangelization and the, what he's called us to do. Yeah, and what a saint for our day and age. I mean, prophetic in telling us what was gonna happen and it, it has, and we need him more than ever now to intercede for us in this crazy world with all the turmoil and chaos. Let's talk about peace a little bit. The rosary brings you peace, silence brings you peace. With all the tumult and chaos in the world and looking at your children, how do you focus on God and how do you not worry about the future and just center yourself on Christ? Because I know that I've been given gifts that can never be taken away. Amen. I, I've been given those gifts and what I've put my energy, especially in these times, into evangelizing mm -hmm. and creative evangelizing because I, I know that I have these gifts that can't be taken away, but there's so many people that don't and there are so many people that need hope right yeah. now. They need comfort, they need love, they need yeah. hope. So I've actually started, and our priest told us to do this for years. He's like, use your social media, ah. evangelize. We have a great Polish priest at our ah. parish, Father Chris. Nice. Use your social media. So I have, I've started to evangelize on my social media. I was pretty quiet Beautiful. before I was kind of trying to do the you know, yeah. breadcrumb in the water yep. thing, but now I'm doing it regularly Beautiful. and it's reaching people. Good. And that, that's, um, that feels good. And a lot of people in your age group who may not be exposed to God much because not many people are talking about God. No. You know. We've also joined uh, Legatus um, and are active in that chapter. Oh yeah. So that's nice to go together as a couple and meet other couples that are, both, are strong in their faith and looking to continue to grow in their Beautiful. faith. Beautiful. For those of you who don't know Legatus, and I served as vice chairman, I was on the board a number of years, been involved for 20 years. Tell our audience a little bit about what Legatus is and does. Sure, so Legatus is a network of Catholic leaders and the mission is to get to heaven and bring as many people along with us as we can. Yeah. And it's couples, it's husbands it and is. wives who go to have an evening with a, a rosary, confession, mass, a, a good dinner, a nice speaker, and you leave with not only a more of a sense of community, but taking that back into the workplace and learning to you know, live, study, and spread the faith. Beautiful, legatus.org is the website if anyone's interested. And I've been to your chapter in Naples a number of times, spoken there, and uh, I can see the fruit coming from it, so I'm glad you're involved in that. Last question, because we only got about a minute left. What do you know now that you didn't know during those college days when you had drifted away and were far away from God and trying to do it on your own? Oh, just that God loves you. Yeah. You know, I know that I know right now and I that God loves me no matter what and will never ever leave me. Amen. And that nothing can separate him me from his love. Amen. And and our audience for that matter. No. So many people are trying to do it on their own and if they just turn to God and humble their hearts and say, I can't do it without you, miracles happen. As it's happened in your life, your husband's life, my life. I thank God that you are home. I thank God he used a EWTN program to help bring you home. And I thank God that you're an evangelist now spreading the faith. God bless you and welcome home. Thank you, Tom. Let's talk about transformational habits for our spiritual lives. Specifically, I wanna consider the power of silence for our spiritual growth. Cardinal Seurat reminds us, God achieves everything acts in all circumstances and brings about all our interior transformations, but he does it when we wait for him in recollection and silence. Practically speaking, how do we fit more silence into our everyday lives? First, declutter the noise throughout the day. 
Some of us are tempted to be so connected all the time that we can barely think. There's always social media, audiobooks, music, podcasts, YouTube videos, conversations, televisions, you name it, something making noise. All of that noise can crowd out our chance for self-reflection, but even more important to the Christian life in particular, it crowds out time for prayer. Take moments throughout the day when you would normally turn on some noise, perhaps while folding laundry, driving in the car, or washing dishes, to be silent instead. Raise your heart and mind to God in that short but attentive moment. The Holy Spirit has a chance to move and speak in those briefest of moments when we turn our attention from our distractions to God. Next, plan silent time each day. Those little moments are crucial, but not enough. The Christian life thrives on regular prayer time every day. This can include things like scripture reading and praying the rosary, but it also must include time for listening. Jesus says so simply and clearly to the Benedictine monk in Insino Jesu, listen to me and I will speak to you. When we are listening in our prayer and not just checking the box for having prayed today, everything changes. Finally, bring more silence into your life through Eucharistic adoration. If you can't make a regular holy hour, make an effort to stop in the chapel every week. Jesus says in Encino Jesu, fidelity to adoration is the key that will unlock for you all the treasures and infinite riches of my heart. May we all learn to pray Solomon's prayer, give me, Lord, a heart that listens. Here's your opportunity to grow in faith and help Jesus save souls. Visit our CatholicsComeHome.org website and click on the Shop tab. Here, you can discover our four brand new popular books to help you and those you love grow closer to Christ. The Willpower Advantage, Building Habits for Lasting Happiness, includes a personal spiritual audit and a customized plan to help you fight lifelong vices and find freedom in Christ. One Moment Can Change a Soul helps you guide family and friends home to the Catholic faith. Plus, two beautifully illustrated children's books to help your children or grandchildren stay close to Jesus. Epic, the story of Jesus' Holy Catholic Church and Santa's Priority, keeping Christ in Christmas. You can also order a car magnet to evangelize in traffic, evangelization cards, and DVDs with all of our best episodes of our international television series. If you have a question or want to tell us how Catholics Come Home has blessed someone you know, or you can financially help us blitz the secular airwaves with these powerful evangelicals, contact us at info at catholicscomehome.org or by mail. Catholics Come Home, P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia 30077. Please help Jesus save more souls. Despite attending a Catholic university in Minnesota and having a strong faith background, Sarah didn't make Mass a priority in her young adult life. But after seeing a Catholics Come Home interview on EWTN, this young development officer realized how much she missed the Eucharist and the gift of her Catholic faith. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Catholics Come Home. Please keep Sarah and the Landman family and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. Remember to fulfill your role in the new evangelization and help love somebody to heaven. I've got to love somebody to heaven. I've got to